Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into Otram's YouTube channel. Today I thought we would try something a little different and go through diagnosing a truck that came in. Uh, this truck came in, a uh, customer was driving down the highway, punched it to accelerate and pass slower moving traffic, and you know all the lights on the dash came on, uh, and it's throwing codes for misfires on every cylinder, and he thinks it may have jumped time. Um, so. We're going to start from there and we'll get into it and see what's actually going on. So out here in the parking lot, before we even, you know, started or tried to move it, I took the top covers off and put the crank at top dead center and we're in time. So now we can pull it back into the shop or actually pull it into the shop and see what's going on. So we've got quite the plethora of codes and they all appear to be misfire related which um, is gonna make it fun. I was hoping to get like uh, a lean or rich or some kind of code that would point me in a direction. So I'm gonna back out of this, open up live data and see what our fuel trims look like when we start this up. Okay, and our long-term fuel trims are way wonky. You really don't wanna see those much over 10 and we're at negative 40. So we're pulling a lot of fuel off of base. I noticed this had something plugged in line with the mass airflow sensor, so I'm gonna go unplug that and see what happens. So this truck has a secondary air injection bypass kit on it, plugged into the mass airflow sensor. So I'm gonna unplug this and see if we'll run any better. And there we've got the factory plug plugged back in and the bypass removed. And let's see if that'll clean up any. So we're adding fuel on the short term Still doesn't sound right, and we're misfiring on seven and eight, four. But that's probably just because our fueling is so wonky. I'm gonna let this sit here for a minute and see if that'll maybe skew back to a little bit correct. And I'm gonna pull up the mass airflow data as well. Actually, I'll just do air fuel now. Okay, so we're reading way high on the mass airflow. So I'm gonna pull it out and see if there's anything stuck on it, making it be dirty. Can you unplug it? Okay, let's see if it'll start without it. Hey, we seem to be running much better without a mass airflow sensor plugged in. Um, I didn't see anything stuck to it that would cause it to read this bad, or this poorly. Um, but being as it's uh, 4.7, you know, you would expect it to be, you know, five-ish grams per second, where it was running at like 11 to 20. I sprayed it out with mass airflow cleaner, and that did not help. So I'm gonna go look up the specs to actually test the mass airflow sensor, since it's running much more smoothly without it plugged in. For comparison, here's another 2006 Land Cruiser that's running properly, and you can see the mass airflow sensor is reading 5.8 grams a second um, at right around idle. And long terms are a lot closer to zero, short terms are a lot closer to zero. Uh, so I'm thinking that there's definitely something wrong with the mass airflow sensor in that other truck based on the way the fuel trims are acting and the mass airflow sensor is reading and the fact that it's affecting both banks at the same time. You know, there's only so many things that'll affect both sides of the engine on one of these at the same time. So I'm gonna do some deeper testing on that mass airflow sensor. So as a quick and dirty test, just to rule out wiring problems, I swapped the known good mass airflow sensor into this, and we still seem to be reading a little bit high. Um, but it's running a little bit better. So I'm gonna let these run for a little bit and just see what it does to my fuel trims um, after letting it idle for a while. So I went under the hood and I disconnected the other side of the secondary air bypass delete kit. And all of a sudden, my mass airflow sensor dropped back to where it should be. And my fuel trims are positive 20 and about negative 20 on the long. So those are gonna end up canceling each other out to about zero. 
So I think it might be a failed secondary air bypass kit. So I'm going to swap the original mass airflow sensor back into this and see what it does. Okay, so I've plugged the original mass airflow sensor back into this and we appear to be running much better. And I'll show you under the hood what I unhooked. So this guy here is the bypass kit and I just unplugged where it was hooked into the factory harness. So something out of this is sending a signal that the computer did not like. And I've had this running for maybe 15 minutes, um, came back out, and as you can see, our fuel trims are much better. And we're not reading any misfires anymore. So that appears to be it. You know, we'll take it for a couple good test drives just to be sure. So luckily, this one was a relatively easy fix. Um, it was just having to unplug the aftermarket uh, bypass kit. That's the second one of these I've had to undo in a month for causing the engine to not run right. Yes, the secondary air injection is very expensive to fix when it fails, um, but it also lasts like 15 years between failures. So it's probably worth it just to fix it right. Not to mention that putting the bypass kit in technically isn't legal, it's missions tampering. Um, so yeah, not really the proper way to fix it either. Anyway, hope that helped. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for tuning in.